Bruce Schneier is on the line. He is Schneier on security, one of the legendary security experts. And it's always a pleasure. Really, we should just say I'm, we are not worthy of the great Bruce Schneier. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for joining us. Hey there, but you can't come into my backyard. Oh, why not? You got anything against you're gonna blow up stuff? <laughs> you got anything against <laughs> thermite? That stuff's great. It's so much fun. So, Bruce, else's you were at our backyard. I get it. <laughs> you were at RSA this year. I was. I go every year. It's a uh, kind of a thing, right? We all go. Like uh, and Thirty thousand people, some stupid number. Somebody was saying how RSA has become almost a carnival. That people are kind of um, making. Uh, it's it's become like um, commercialized security. Do you agree with that? It's been it's been commercialized for a couple of decades. The uh, show floor is huge, hundreds of companies all kind of desperate for your attention. They do all sorts of stuff, right? I mean, IBM bought my company last year, so I'm at the IBM booth, and we did a cocktail night. I invented a cocktail and we <laughs> served it to the show floor. What was it called? You know, maybe was the best idea it was called the immunity cocktail right immunity security get it and it was pretty tasty and pretty boozy but it was late in the day sounds like fun but, you actually know, this is what you got to do to get people to yeah. your booth yeah ibm resilient now you're called ibm resilient cto of ibm resilient uh let's talk about the internet of things you you say in this essay which you presented at uh, at rsa that with the Internet of Things, we're building a world-sized robot. How are we going to control it? And so that's my metaphor, right? Because you think about it, the Internet now has eyes and ears, all those sensors, and now has hands and feet, all those actuators, and it's got a brain, which is a classical definition of a robot. It's not a classical robot. It doesn't have a, a skin with the robot stuff inside and the sensors on, on the edges. But... It's an internet that senses, thinks, and acts, and that's pretty terrifying. Well, especially so, since the limbs of this robot, the individual devices, have often case been created by people who have no regard for security. They're hardwiring in passwords. They're not making it possible to update them. Even if they do make it possible, they often don't update them. These things are just rife for hacking. Right. You've got the high... The high, the expensive stuff and the cheap stuff. You got the cars and the medical devices, which are vulnerable too. But you know they're going to have engineering teams. And then you have the the toys and the, the right the cheap stuff, which is really made with no security. There's no security team. They can't be updated. You talked about the Dyn attack earlier, and right those are devices where the way you update them is you throw them away and buy a new one, right. so, which is kind of a terrible way to do updating. You know, we're obviously we're going to have and buy more of these devices over time. So, you know, at, in, in our homes, we're going to have probably 10, 15, 20 devices. What's the best strategy here for protecting ourselves? Like, do we do a firewall, like a hardware firewall at, at the router level, or what do you do? Well, right now you do nothing. I mean, your solution is don't buy them, which is you know kind of a dumb solution, but it's what we got. There are companies working on all sorts of tech answers. Some of it's secure building blocks. Some of it's having sort of a firewall-like device in your home to uh, to mediate all those devices. Some of it's security that assumes a malicious environment. You know, I'm pushing right now for regulatory solutions. Really? My worry, Good luck with that, my by the worry, way. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but here's, here's my issue. When stuff starts killing people, yeah. governments get involved. Right. And it was great when it was your spreadsheet crashing and you lose your data. It's really different when your defibrillator crashes and you lose your yeah, life. Very good point. Right? Same operating system, yeah. same software, but very different result. So my worry is that governments are going to get involved regardless. So I'm not saying... Our choice is government involvement or no government involvement. Our choice is smart government involvement or stupid government involvement. So if we get ahead of this and figure out what regulations make sense, we could avoid governments kind of destroying this whole thing. You propose creating an actual agency for this purpose. Yeah, I'm not the only one. And then you go back to the last century, new technologies made new agencies all the time. Radios did, cars did. Trains did, airplanes did, nuclear power did. All those agencies showed up because it's new tech and government needs to understand it. 
So right now we're living with this new tech, which you know has been fun and games so far, but it now is moving into our homes, into our businesses, our cars, our bodies. And we're gonna need government expertise because stupid government is very dangerous. So, one so yeah, I think a government agency is gonna help. So one, one question I have for you, uh, given that I, I, I tend to be buying you know, something new for the home that connects to the internet every few weeks. Um, what You've you, got an oven that connects to the internet. Got You've got oven, lights got that connect, lights. thermostat that but, connects but, to the but, internet. But, but, what, what I'm worried about, though, is the devices with microphones. Like, does that concern you? Do you worry about, like, the Amazon devices, the Echoes, the Dots, the Google devices? Do you have those in your own home? So I don't, but, you know, right, I got a phone, right? Now phones now do it. Yeah. It's, I mean, what's interesting about these devices is we kind of thought the voice to speak text would happen here. But it turns out it's a lot cheaper in, in many cases to ship the raw voice over the internet to some centralized server and have them do the voice to text. That's how the Samsung phones work. Sorry, Samsung uh, televisions. That's how the Echo works. Yeah. So they're not just listening locally. It's a listening device that by design sends uh, the voice to a remote location. Yeah, right still- now Amazon is battling a court case where a police wants that data and Amazon is saying no, you know, they're not going to survive that. Yeah. So, you know, this battle, like a balance between cost of processing and cost of transport is making some really interesting trade-offs. You talked about Amazon Web Services. I mean, that, that's only because it is cheaper for us to outsource our data processing somewhere else on the planet because data transport is so cheap. I feel like you're going uphill with the current with the current government. Though you're going uphill. I mean, what's happening right now is they're actually eliminating agencies. That seems Mm -hmm. to be the plan. Yeah, with the past government, I was going uphill. But my guess is, when some disaster happens, we're going to get regulation. Remember the terrorist attacks of September 11th. Right. That's when people respond. Within a month, we had uh, some Office of Homeland Security. Within a year, we had a new Federal Department of Homeland Security, and that was a small government Republican administration. So when, Fear makes people do strange things. When you say a disaster happens, what is your kind of laundry list? What's your top three things you're most concerned about? Is it is it Tesla cars? Like, what, what, what are we talking about? Uh, what's interesting is I think the real world doesn't realize is that computers fail differently. And people who make cars know how cars fail. Every once in a while, a car breaks down. And right? every once in a while, the brakes fail and the car crashes. But we in the computer world know how computers fail. They all work great until one day none of them work. Huh. And, and that's just different. And people out in that mechanical world don't understand it. So my big worry is class break. You know, whether it's Amazon Web Services or Dyne, something that takes out a lot of stuff. And it'll be something that, that hurts people. You know, maybe it's thermostats in the dead of winter. Maybe it's cars. Maybe it's planes. Maybe it's heart defibrillators. I, mean, I don't know what the device is going to be but it'll be something that causes real damage to life and property. And then people will say something must be done. And you know how Congress is, yeah. right? Yeah. Something must be done. This is something, therefore we must do it. The knee jerk reaction is the worst possible yeah. reaction. Right, so if we yeah. can, I, mean, I wanna get ahead of this. I get that we're all you know, small government libertarians, stay off our internet, but that's not gonna fly right. when the internet starts hurting people. You also argue that the DMCA is a problem, that, that laws, copyright laws that prohibit research are an issue. And this is interesting. The DMCA is a law that protects copyright. I mean, it's kind of a Disney's law, <laughs> but there are rules in there that prohibit circumvention of security measures. So John Deere can use these to prevent farmers from repairing their tractors. And the Krug coffee machine can use them from stopping you from making uh, pods of the coffee you want. And they are now being used as a protectionist measure. So companies can avoid uh, competition and security research. Now we have a temporary exemption now for a couple of years. EFF helped us get that. But Basically, the problem is we can't do the level of research into these things, into these toys and these toothbrushes and whatever freaking oven you have and refrigerator (laughs) to see if they're secure because these laws prohibit research. Yeah. 
Uh, Ed Felton, of course, tried to try to investigate election machines and was stopped by the DMCA. He was able to go ahead and do that thanks to that exemption. And it's a good thing, too, because those Diebold machines were not very secure at all, Damn. as he found out. Uh, the this, election machines, cars, medical devices. Yeah. You start looking at, uh, I mean, the group at the University of Washington has done a lot of work here. There's there's a lot of vulnerabilities. You know, and we've spent a good couple of decades with our computers and phones making them secure. We don't want to go through that again with all these devices. So, yeah, I think it's interesting. You don't have any uh, – you do have a phone, and we are all are carrying around the ultimate spy device. It's got GPS. Mm -hmm. It's got a microphone. It's got a camera. And we just blithely walk around with those. But you don't I have any – worse. I, I, I play Pokemon Go. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> You're letting everybody know works. where you are. Did you get the new Pikachu with the party hat for the one-year anniversary? That's awesome. I, I did, but let's <laughs> yeah. not talk about that. When you evolve him. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> I'm so glad to know Bruce Schneier plays Pokemon Go. That is the best thing that's happened all day so far. Yeah. I'd also, <laughs> I'd also eat the crickets if I was <laughs> Good man. Uh, do you, do you, but do you, uh, do you eschew otherwise uh, Internet Things devices? You don't have a Nest or a, a Hue light bulbs or any of that stuff. Do you stay away from that stuff in your house? I mean, I mean we're all just making the best trade-offs we can. I do have an internet thermostat because yeah. I travel a lot, and being able to drop my temp my temperature in the house down to uh, energy saving levels and bring it up. It's really convenient at home. Is yeah, is very, and it's, it saves money and it's good for the planet. So I mean, we're all doing this. We're making our choices. I don't have the light bulbs. I don't have the refrigerator. I have the thermostat. I'm not on Facebook, but I play Pokemon Go. I mean, it's really hard to moralize. To different people, what to do? It's a good point. We're all yeah. doing the best we can, yeah. and and some some of these applications are compelling. I didn't do internet banking for the longest time. Now I do. Really, interesting. We're all we're all getting yeah. by. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You know, I don't know what to do either, and it's a it's I a challenge. Pick, I pick big manufacturers that I know have security teams right. that are actually doing the testing and hopefully looking one for hopes. these holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one hopes. Uh, but, yeah, it, but then, but then, Philips light bulbs kind of screwed right. us when they Hughes. drop support for third-party systems. Right, and but then big they use and they're using Zigbee, which has flaws in it. So, right, yeah. Unfortunately, big company isn't a good mnemonic. It's not bad. You want to do like cool company. You know, <laughs> Nest is probably going to be is better. Okay. June is probably okay. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Nest has Google's backing and their research team. Yeah. So. And, and, and what is this toy company in Europe that has oh my God. Was voices of children and then had their database hacked? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is bad. This is These are things, parents, conversations, parents have through this teddy bear with their kids, and the, and the audio is stored basically in a MongoDB database that's unsecured and easily accessed. This is crazy. This is crazy. Who's who's hacking that? Like, who wants those? Just, it showed up on Shodan. All you have to do is search no, on Shodan. Like, who wants those conversations of like some little kids but talking with the parents? This is a big deal. In, in Germany, a toy was declared right. illegal or a violation of some regulation because right. they have a rule that listening devices can't be disguised as something else. Right. And well, this so was a toy that listens and responds that is being, I think, banned in Germany. I, the, it, this crash in old and new is really interesting. Yeah, I had Teddy Ruxpin. I was, that was like <laughs> he talked. He didn't that was him. safe. You put a t little tape in the back. You hit play. Oh, done deal. Did you, did you hack the, I had friends that hacked the Teddy Ruxpin. Put the coding in, in any tape they wanted. <laughs> and had it sing, I want to be seduced. Dude. That's amazing. <laughs> I want to be seduced. That's good. I like it. Uh, well, it's always great to talk to you, Bruce, and I'm glad you're ringing the bell. Uh, I I worry because I feel like even if government regulators and a new government agency is formed, it's going to cause – there's so many conflicting, you know, interests here that it may cause more of a problem than it solves – I don't have high hopes for uh, for government intervention, but I understand what you're saying, it, that, that no one else has the standing to do this. Right. right. Uh, it, it, there's an economic problem here. I mean, the economics is not going to be for more security. Right. And it's like, you know, food safety. It's like automobile safety. Government is how we get these uh, – yeah. These devices safe enough. That's the mechanism we use. And yeah, there are all sorts of problems. I think it's going to be worse the other way. Bruce Schneier, you could find out more uh, at Schneier on Security. He's the CTO of IBM Resilient. IBM Resilient. And man, Bruce, I, sh I read you religiously. You are the king of this. So I'm so glad we were able to talk to you once again. 
Schneier yeah, blog you. on Twitter. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce.